You've no doubt came across errors when working with GraphQL. We have a message that is returned from the server, and this error could be about validation errors or server-side errors, and you as a user implementing the GraphQL schema, well, you don't really have much insight into what that error actually is, other than the message that's sent with it. You've no doubt had to use switch statements, replace statements, regex to remove your GraphQL error prefixes, and much more when dealing with errors on the front end. If we now have a look at the code for the server file, we can see that we have some example users with the flags suspended. So inside of our mutation to log in, let's just mimic what could happen here. We have our database or inline array of users that we simply throw errors from the server, whether this be an invalid password or that that user is suspended. If you're using something like GraphQL Yoga or another GraphQL server implementation, they'll often come with a class to instantiate a new error. Now this is useful because when we throw a new GraphQL Yoga error here, we can then pass along a second argument, which is passed through to extensions when we make a GraphQL request, so you can add some more metadata to the failed error responses. The extensions could contain status codes and other things to help you render the appropriate error on the front end. Now when we make a request, we'll get the error as well as the extensions returned to us in the response. All of the errors that we've seen up until now haven't been type safe or used any of the GraphQL schema system to define what possible errors could look like to you implementing the GraphQL API. Now let's define a new GraphQL union type and we'll call this auth payload. And this will be of the type user incorrect credentials error or user suspended error. Then let's go ahead and define the incorrect credentials error and the user suspended error to contain message. For suspended users, we'll also pass along when they will be unlocked at. Now all that we need to do inside of the code for our mutation resolver is return a new object and this object will match that of the incorrect credentials error or the user suspended error. And in the case of the user suspended error, we'll also pass along a date for when they will be unlocked. Now if we open the documentation inside of Graphical, we can see that we have the fields login that returns the type auth payload. This auth payload can be of multiple types that we've just defined in the schema. And we can see when we explore this that we can see all of the fields and the types that are returned. Because this is a GraphQL union type, we'll need to define some inline fragments here. When the response type is the, the type user, we'll return the ID and name. And when it's the error, we'll return the message. And also for the user suspended, we'll return a message and when it will be unlocked at. You can learn more about GraphQL union types and implementing those with GraphQL tools in episode 17. Now, if we run a GraphQL mutation, we can see that we have the type name as well as the fields when the type matches that in the fragments that we defined in the request. If we look closer, we can see that we have the message field on both incorrect credentials error and user suspended error. To simplify things, we can use a GraphQL interface called error, and then for each of our separate error types, we can implement the interface error. Now if we replace the inline fragment for the incorrect credentials error with the interface error, we can also fetch the message of error. Now, if you make some more requests to simulate some errors, you'll see that we have the type name returned to us as it was before. And if we open the documentation explorer, we can see now that we have the interface for error and all of the different implementations that we have inside of our schema. Using interfaces with these errors makes it really easy to add additional errors. If we update the auth payload to be of another type for a user being permanently banned, we can then update the resolver code for our login mutation to return a user banned error. Then if we run a request, we can see that we have that message, but we didn't define in the fragment at all any of the fields when that error occurred. This is because we're using the interface error and we're spreading on to return message. There are many other ways to extend this pattern and we'll explore this in another video.